Friday with family members of detained Americans Paul Whelan and Brittany Griner. Administration officials say they've been working to free the retired Marine and WNBA star from Russian custody. Nancy Cordes has more from the White House. Innocent of any charge resulting from this potential kidnapping? Nearly four years after Paul Whelan was first arrested in Russia, his sister got her first meeting with the president today along with the wife of basketball star Brittany Griner, who was detained in February for possessing a trace amount of cannabis oil. I had no intent to break any Russian law. The two are living behind bars in diplomatic limbo. Back in June, the U.S. offered Russia a prisoner swap, Griner and Whelan in exchange for convicted Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. We have put forward a, a substantial proposal to, to Russia. But the U.S. heard nothing until early August, after Greiner was sentenced to nine years in a penal colony. I love my family. Only then did Russia's foreign minister say the Kremlin is ready to discuss this topic. D discussions are ongoing. Sadly, we don't have a result here to tell you about. But the negotiations are now taking place, and the Russians have made some kind of significant response? They have not responded to... Uh, our offer. But that doesn't mean that, that that we're not still in negotiations and we're not still trying. Waylon and Griner's families have expressed frustration with the slow pace and scant details. They are not moving. They are not doing anything. But today's meeting may have mended fences. Paul Whelan's brother tells CBS News, we appreciate President Biden's concern for our family. This meeting reassures us that Paul's case is still a priority for his administration. Nancy joins us now from the White House for more. Nancy, is the U.S. government closer to a breakthrough in these cases? Well, Catherine, if they are, they haven't said it publicly. All they will say is that at least the two sides are now talking, working through the appropriate channels to discuss the situation. That's better than uh, the situation was for months after the U.S. made this proposal and took the very unusual step of publicizing this prisoner swap proposal. That's something that the U.S. rarely does. They said they were forced to take that step because they just weren't hearing anything back from the Russians. They were getting radio silence. But even after uh, they publicized the fact that they were willing to give uh, uh, Victor Boot, this uh, convicted arms dealer, back to Russia, uh, things still stalled out until Brittany Griner uh, actually was, was sentenced to nine years in a penal colony. So now those talks are happening, but according to White House aides, no major breakthroughs to report yet. Let's take that a step further. If a prisoner swap went ahead, what, what could it look like? Well, the signals we've always gotten uh, are that it, it's not just a two-for-one straight swap. That that's probably something that the Russians wouldn't accept. So there's probably more to the swap than we've been able to glean through our sources. Perhaps there's a, a, a second Russian involved, perhaps a Russian who's not here uh, in the United States but is being held somewhere else. Those are just uh, simply details that we're not privy to right now. Um, it, it may even be that that's not enough for the Russians, and perhaps that's why we haven't seen a swap actually take place. It's important to note that all this is taking place against the very tense backdrop of uh, a major conflict in Ukraine. Russia invading Ukraine, the U.S. Uh, continuing to provide weaponry to Ukraine that is enabling Ukraine to, uh, in some cases, push back Russian forces. And so that could very well uh, be hampering negotiations over um, getting not just uh, Brittany Griner and, and Paul Whelan home, but uh, there are so many other Americans detained, not just in Russia, but around the world that the State Department is working to bring home as well. On 60 Minutes, President Biden spoke exclusively with Scott Pelley. He said the U.S. response to Russia's use of non-conventional weapons such as a tactical nuke would be, quote, consequential. Let's listen. As Ukraine succeeds on the battlefield, Vladimir Putin is becoming embarrassed and pushed into a corner. And I wonder, Mr. President, what you would say to him if he is considering using chemical or tactical nuclear weapons. Don't. 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 It will change the face of war, unlike anything since World War II. And the consequences of that would be what? I'm what would the U.S. response be? Do you think I would tell you if I knew exactly what it would be? Of course I'm not going to tell you. It will be consequential. 
they'll become more of a pariah in the world than they ever have been. And depending on the extent of what they do, it will determine what response would occur. Nancy, what additional lethal aid is the U.S. now promising Ukraine? Well, there's another $600 million package of weaponry and ammunition that uh, the Pentagon says is heading to Ukraine. They are quick to point out that this is the 21st time that they've basically dipped into the Department of Defense stockpile to provide um, this equipment to the Ukrainians. We're talking about uh, not just ammunition, but counter artillery radars, small arms and ammunition. They say that they're really focusing, Catherine, on the kind of equipment that Ukraine needs right now. Uh, the war has changed, they say, and, and Ukraine is uh, on the offense in some areas, retaking territory, and they want to equip the Ukrainians best for the war that is taking place at this moment. What's interesting, Catherine, is that we've now seen in rapid succession several major packages of aid going to Ukraine from the U.S. just in the past couple of months. The pace has really picked up, and it pe appears to be a recognition that Ukraine has some momentum right now, and the best way to take full advantage of that momentum is to make sure that the Ukrainians have the weaponry and the ammunition that they need. Nancy Cordes, thank you. You're welcome.